sisters awake. So, let me start, if I can stay awake here. Um, I suppose with, with this whole uh, weekend, the immersion, I suppose the question I was looking at, um, um, do I start this way? Yeah, how, how, what, do we, what do we do when we, when we meet each other as Baba people? What are we going to do? Shabab, that's fine. Right. What, what, what's, what's the main game here? You know, we, how are we going to um, live in a way which is pleasing to Baba, and we remember Baba in the process? What do we do? And we can just have the whole secular thing and get involved with each other's lives and talk about all that sort of stuff. Boring. You know, we, that just goes on forever, doesn't it? I mean, we have this challenge. We have Baba here, now what do we do with this? And how do we express that to each other? To me, Francis has given the book, Stay With God, mm -hmm. as a secret key to have a look at that. Mm -hmm. And in a most natural way, love and art and his grace and his memory and his presence are all the same thing. They're all synonyms in a way. They're all meant to be the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to hear about you know, your latest trip and so on, but I want to hear about where Baba is in your life. Mm -hmm. Tell me that. This is Eric would say that, you know, brother. <laughs> you come here. I don't want to know what, where you've been, but where's Barbara in your life? She, give that to me. I'm hungry for that. Mm -hmm. I think Stay With God ultimately is the book for that. And I do feel too that, that as a community of people, uh, we have this book and we really... That's our task in a way. This is the start of that. Now lost my train. So what where where do we go with that? And I think that's as a community in a way, this is sort of clearing the ground to try and well, we're post Monday. What do we do? And how are we going to move this thing forward? And I think the energy should be in us as a community to trying to work out what Francis wants, because he's the real voice here, I think. Mm -hmm. And then doing that slowly, slowly, and then we will be Baba to each other. I like when I bow down to you, I'm actually bowing down to Baba and in actual fact. And what you've done is there's Baba there in concrete form, in this iconography of the real, in this, un in this way of art. He's not going to be there physically, but I will feel his presence there. I will sense it in the tones. I will sense it in the poetry, in the silence. I think we've got to get perceptive to that. I think that's where this is. For me, this is where it's going. That's my burning question. Mm -hmm. And as I started last on Thursday, you know, that Erich's opening, when he gave it, he used to speak among the wall. Um, this is what I've gathered. I'm open-hearted here. This is all. I'm, this is what I'm sharing here. This is what we need. To, this is what I think is the model. And in a way, the way Francis wrote this book is a model of how we should also do it. Not just the content, how he struggled with this and went through it, and all the the work that went into it. It's a good model also for how we should do this. And I think Francis was right in the early days here too, when I was with Sam's singing group. You know, we sang. All year round, every weekend we sang for the anniversary. When the anniversary is over, next weekend we practice for the following. <laughs> it was just the life. That's what we did. Um, and I think instead of going out, you know, it's, the internet does all Baba. Baba's everywhere on the internet. Everything is there. But where do people come when they're going to really feel Baba's presence? That's, I think, is the main game. What, what, what are they going to arrive to? And I think, and as a community of people, we have the potential too of an audience who feels bad, but this is unique. You know, great art started with a community of people, a few people who like to move, a few people who are dedicated, and it started. And I think we are really rich in that way. We have a unique audience, and we have Baba. And I think um, we have this book which gives us a real sharp edge, no nonsense. And Barbara says, I'm so proud I wrote that through you, Eric. What a credential that is. You know, that's just fantastic. Barbara's put his imprimatur on this. This is my book. And, um, okay, it came through the voice of Francis. 
But his presence and so on, Baba's presence, and Baba heard it, is permeating that book. And I think it's probably going to age well even. And that's going to come through, and even now, I've, you know, I hear things which I never heard before. And I think it'll age really well, and we'll, we'll hear more. But I think it's a real gift for us, this book, for that. And this, so, um, I think that, that's, that's in the back of my mind, you know, thinking about all these and what we're doing here. This is really early days. And I also have the thought, just listening to, to the week two, that um, it's a change. That here we have Francis nearly presenting the, the, the theory, the theoria, the picture of what it is. And then the, that comes in first, and then we realize it through our art. We actualize it and experience it through the art, concretizes it. That's, I think that's the classic approach. Classicism starts off with the vision, and then it comes through, and through art, you experience, you embody, you bring it down to earth. The perennials would sort of agree with that, I think. And the romanticism is the more you start with experience, and then you're trying to look for this sort of vision. Here we have a, and Francis did say, I remember him saying to me once, that we are, he felt we're due for a new classicism. Not that those terms are a little wobbly, because you can't really separate them, but the idea of having a vision to start with. And I want to have a look at later on where, through Stay With God in Book 5, he says, Art is. He's got about five or six stanzas where he starts with, Art is. Art is. This is the definite. This is what it is. He's giving us a concept. This is our theory. This is our <coughs> vision. And now you can work through that. Um, but that's, I think, the approach. That's, that's what Book 5 does, really, um, looking through it. So let me just start off with this. Um, and revitalization here. You know, there's some words which are bubble words. Companion is a bubble word. Others use that so much. You like companion. You can't say that word without thinking you like barber. These words are tagged now. And I think revitalization, where he says, I've come to revitalize the world religions and string them together like beads on a string. I think revitalization, giving new life, he's reinvigorated the word itself, and that, to me, is a bit of a, is a Bible word. He has done that. And so I think, where he said revitalize world religions, I think in Stay With God, he's revitalizing art and poetry. And he's really giving it significance, not in an elite sense, but in an everyday spiritual sense. This is what, if we're meant to love, we're meant to be creative and honest, be free in whatever you do. Anyway, that's, that's my sort of thrust here. And I want to have a look at um, Ezra Pound as, as sort of symbolizing modernism. And he was the big player in poetry, as Picasso was in painting. And have no doubt, Francis loved um, Ezra Pound. And he was taken by Picasso. Um, but, uh, and it's wonderful to do that Pound gets mentioned more than anybody else, any other poet. And Baba heard Ezra Pound. <laughs> Lucky him. <laughs> Even though he was condemned, it's so fortunate that Baba heard Ezra Pound's name and Picasso's name. You know, you hear this story from marriage, how lucky they were. Um, he's sending me to hell, but I heard he said my name. <laughs> so that's all good. So let's just pick up some things on Ezra Pound. This is what Francis says about him. He's the greatest writer in, writer in English in this century. The only pity is that he hasn't written in English more. He put all these Latin quotes and Greek quotes and everything else in there. And it's a little bit the literati style. And, you know, you have to have a multilinguist to understand him. But Francis says this about him. With Chaucer and Shakespeare, Pound is, I consider, the greatest writer in our language. Uh, in the ABC of Spirituality, which hasn't been published, there's a little quote there. Except a few writers, except a few writers of pure and sincere intent, like Kumara Swami and Pound, their intent wittingly or unwittingly made their pen's extension of his hand, of God's hand. That's high praise. He really thought Pound had a certain something. 
He pound, this is what is also in the archives, is a tool which every contemporary person interested in actual living should have in his hand. You wouldn't get that from just reading uh, Stay With God. When Robert went to Mayer House in the 50s, he said that Francis was going around with basically two books. One was Pound's translation of the Song of Songs, Confucius' translation. The, the Song of Songs of Confucius, translated by Pound, and he had also Benedetto Croce's book on linguistics, on aesthetics, I should say. And I'll talk more about him in a moment. And Francis says this, Pound's 45th canto is a perfect jewel amongst the tinsel of modern verse. This is where Pound is against usury, against money being the big player, <coughs> determining everything in life. Money has spoiled it, you know. Um, and that's really what's killed art in many ways. It's the madness about money. And that, that and he quotes he has little excerpts from it too. Okay, I won't do that because I'm I'm short of time, but I could come back to it. And um, he said some things here, for instance. Yesterday this is Francis. I read some perfect poetry of the 12th century troubadour. I think his name is Arnent Daniel in Pound's book, The Spirit of Romance. So he was reading that. This is early Pound. And this is an interesting little thing which I've sort of discovered. Um, Jeannie Foster, do you know her? Uh, Lauren? I know of her. Of her. Okay, she was a close friend of Pound and the Barber Lover. And she also has this book. Uh, Awakening Grace, Poems at the Feet of the Silent Master, which Jeannie and Darwin Shaw put together and Sherry R. Press published. She knew Pound. There's a book, a biography of hers about letters to Pound, to Ford, and to um, Yates, I think. She was, she was a close friend with them. And um, she had written to Pound about Stay With God. She was on writing terms. And said, I'm sending you a copy of Stay With God. So here's the big voice of this modern poetry pound, who Francis was pretty scathing with, and she's, he's going to get a copy. And then Francis sends a telegram. Um, pound was 75 at the time. Under separate cover, I am sending you my book, Stay With God. In doing so, I am not unmindful of your leave an old man alone. But it's, a, it's the only, but at the same time, it is the only way I can acknowledge my debt to you. Okay, thank you. I hope that you may find it at some reasonable workmanship. That's what he really got from Pound. Pound, you know, he cut away all the fat, distilled it all down for this power. So then you get this poetry out of it. Vroom, there's no, there's just, it's just, just a core here. And amongst all that, you get these silences too, being spaces in the lines. And I think that's why Francis, in many ways, writes poetry too. Poetry allows silence to permeate. In the, the prose doesn't have that. Poetry has silence in it, running through it. So Pound's influence. So this is Francis says this. Pound gets the book. Ezra Pound has not replied at all. Thus failing in Barber's test, says Francis. <laughs> when I told beloved Barber, I sent him a copy of Stay With God and reminded Barber that what I said in the book about Ezra Pound was not altogether complimentary. Barber said, if he is the man he thinks he is, he will not mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty tough stuff. Well, if, you, if, you, if you're up there playing with the big boys, <laughs> you stick your head up, you can make a move. That's the game, that's the arena you're in. Actually, Francis said that once here to us too, because he, he said, he put the old saying, if you stick your head up, you're going to get hit. You're going to get it hit. You put your head up, and you're, you're asked for trouble. And he felt he did that. <laughs> with all his friends here in Australia, his writing artist friends, he stuck his head up. Francis did. Yeah, yeah because he's, he's, he's so left field. It's a guy talking about God, man. <laughs> Give me a break, you know. Uh, this woman, Foster, who uh, knew Pound, she said Pound had glimpses of truth in his youth, as did Picasso, I think. 
the early, she said the early phases, the, the blue phase and the pink phase. Picasso really had something and Pound really had something. But I'm going to argue here later on that where they, wanted, where they missed it is they didn't have the teacher. They didn't have the guide to actually take them along. Francis was gifted because he, had, he was a seeker of the truth too when he got the guide of his father. He needed those rails to go on. He needed the, the, the teacher to guide him. And that's the first thing. And um, during, and then John, you sent Francis a nice article yeah. on Pound in later life. That's right. The last years of Pound, he was he silent. Was silent. Mm. After he received Stay With God, I'm only speculating here, but he went mm. silent. Yeah. The last he spoke to monosyllables. But mm. if the book coming from Jeannie Foster, a friend, mm. he, put, he, you know, Stay With God, I'd like to think he read yeah. it. It was a big article in Time magazine right? about him when he just died. And they, he said, well, they said that for the last two years of his life he was silent. Yeah, that's right. And then Ginsburg, the great, you know, the uh, big poet in America, um, went and saw Pound because Pound was one of his heroes. And Pound, he's still speaking, just mumbling. He said, my writing, stupid and ignorant, all the way through. This is Pound's own assessment. Mm -hmm. Any good I've done has been spoilt by bad intentions. Yeah. Now, that's a nice word, an interesting word, because Francis' intentions was to please the beloved. Mm. If you've got your own intentions, where are you going to go with that? Yeah. You've got, you're very limited. Um, the preoccupation with irrelevant and stupid things. Too much stuff, too much data, you know, all this great colossal work which you could the canters, mm. you could never really bring it together. Mm. You could never really pull it together. Greatness is in it. But it's too colossal even for his genius. And this is June 68. He would have got stay with God in 60. Mm. So I'm just it's sort of interesting. Leave that down and then pass it around. Just keep it in the room. Yeah. Did he stop writing as well as? Yeah, he did. Silent? I get it. He went yeah. silent. Okay. Which is probably a sign of his greatness in a way. I don't know. I, I, but well, anyway, Francis certainly learned a lot from Pound. How to write all that, sp all that spiky mm. stuff, and all that economy, and all that colloquial mm. stuff is Poundian. Mm. That's all from Pound. Mm. The ABC of reading, Francis would say, mm. read that. And the ABC of reading is how to read poetry and how to write. Yeah. And the, then Francis writes the ABC of spirituality. Mm. And that's a tip of a hat to Pound. The same title. Mm. They interviewed Pound then he, and the guy said, why are you silent? And he said, I'm just like a car that's uh, parked and the motor's running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Okay, so... Um, so Jeannie Robert Foster, in her correspondence with Francis, talks of Francis' bold interpretation of art. It is very bold. I talk about that. Mm. Francis is really very, very bold here. And Francis writes to her, and it's very revealing in a way. This is Francis to Jeannie Robert Foster. As you may well imagine, this is Francis, it took some courage to set down these views or these judgments that I had arrived at gradually in the course of years. Since it amounts to attack on the gods of art and on the scriptures of aesthetics, I feel I had to be bold since I was writing for and to that god Baba, before whom all gods are nothing, and who is not, who is not only the one without a second, but the supreme artist and the truth of art. Oh. And this is a great theme in Stay With God. But the gods of art, Pound and Picasso, and in all through Stay With God, they get a pounding. Sorry, the pun. Yeah. <laughs> but they really cop it. And the aesthetics of art, I think it was, he was using Benedetto Croce's book on aesthetics. Mm. Benedetto Croce was a great Italian philosopher, and Francis has his books in the library here. And um, he had a great influence through England, Collingwood, um, and then through Dewey mm. in the, John Dewey in the States. Um, Benedict Croce was a, is a real influence, a real, uh, and Francis liked some of him stuff, but he liked it, but it's too secular. He puts the barber spin on it, Francis, and he puts his, the barber spin on it with real ferocity. This is grand. 
bam. <laughs> but it's not all crap. It basically gives it, he wants to give it that real sharp, black and white, distinct bow focus here. So there's no mistake what we're on about here. And um, that's what he does, I think, in a Poundian way. Pause for just a moment. I've got a question. Uh, we're approaching the Q&A time. Really? Would you, <laughs> would you rather he keeps going? Than yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Brothers and sisters of Avatars of Bogue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so, and then I thought we'd finish with just reading some stuff. Let Francis come back in here. We've had this one quite a lot. I won't go over it. Um, but here, um, since Dante, we've been doing it ever since. Seriousness of the immature. The, the, the artist is elitist. The artist is as, as a hero in our society. Uh, craftsmen to each other. They're writing letters to each other. Oh, dear Elliot, I did this. Oh, and then Orden writes back another letter. All this sort of stuff. It becomes literary. And it, it, it's away from every day. We've, we've made this elite sort of artistic world. Children playing prophets. Mm -hmm. I saw this and I saw mm -hmm. that. I'm gifted. This is, this is, this is Pound, antenna of the race. It's one of Pound's things. The artists are antennae of the race. But no guru. No shishiya. I don't need to say that properly. But that's the Japanese word for a master. The wrong way around. Tongues before we ears. We're speaking before we actually hear. Very well, beautifully put. Sculpture without sin. There's no silence here. There's no, there's no real focus here. It's all just self. And pound, you know, if you keep, this is, we come to it later on, there's no old men's music here. There's no singing to the beloved which has been cultivated in one. This is just going to go on and on and on and end up imploding. <laughs> um... Oh yeah, all these guys here, he, he, he mentions Nietzsche and Whitman and all that stuff. Nietzsche's thing about be strong, be tough, that's very Brabazonian. That's what I think he got from him. He said, you know, you, to, to be an artist man, you've got to be strong and hard. And you can hear that in Francis too. He read Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra in one night. He couldn't put it down. He just read the whole thing. It was just a, a bright light for him. And Whitman, of course, Song of Self, Song of Myself, really Song of the Self within you. And he was on his <coughs> influenced by Emerson and the whole Eastern tradition. Mayakovsky was a people's poet. Um, you know, the idea of having a social responsibility. And St. John Casey were also playwrights of the Irish poor, the peasants. Um, these are, James Wilden Johnson was, you know, the, the black African-American guy who did all, read all the sermons. It's a beautiful book, God's Trombone. Um, he, he's caught all the sermons. Um, Gabriel Mistral, a Chilean poet, first one who won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Beautiful, soft, uh, tender poetry. And then pounds the end. He gives him sort of place of honour in a way. And a half compliment. <laughs> Harmony on a loop played with a rifle trigger. <laughs> <laughs> Go Ezra. <laughs> um, but... Those sort of, that sort of image, by the way, you can't do that on the top of the page. You can't just flip that out. Mm -hmm. It's got to come up deep. Otherwise, you do not get the image. Mm -hmm. Although, because it's so distinct. The, the sign of a, a poet's really mind something deeply is because the image is so distinct. It's so fresh. Um, and that's, all these fresh images come up in Francis. He really works this thing. And you think, oh my God, where does he dug that up from? He can only get it deeply. <coughs> Can't, there's no cliches there. This is fresh. Um, and another one of Ezra here. Poor Ezra, all this knowledge of the many languages, you know. There he is criticizing himself. Stupid, I've so many, lost my intentions and all this sort of stuff. And I think Francis is saying that. And Bula Shah, the story is that Bula Shah was a master, or obviously a saintly, in the Islamic tradition. In the classroom, they thought he was a dummy. Didn't do anything, didn't speak. Comes up on the blackboard, writes the first letter in Arabic, A or something, and the board splits. The board splits in two because he knew the power of that word and just knew one letter he had mastered and the whole thing collapses. This is coming out of power. 
And here's Ezra learning all these languages trying to get this power. In the back of Stay With God, it tells that story beautifully. Bajidev, I don't know who that is, and Chaitanya, of course, is, is the master of founder. The Hare Krishnas are sort of based on him, and I think it's the same sort of thing. Bajidev is like Ezra Pound, too much commentary, too much stuff. Chaitanya is just get me the song, get me the, the art, go straight, to the, go straight to the heart of things. And then he comes, you know, words, words, with the name of God given to the eager and pure disciple by the precious guru is the key which unlocks the door of words. Shut fast on the printed page. That's all it is. You have to take the word to unlock things. The name is the living breath of truth. I love the word, the way he uses living and all this stuff. This is living verse. This is living art, the living word. Um, so it's, it's, it's perennial, which blows wherever it will and can unlock even the doors of hearts. Is it in this one, next one here? Okay. Um, and then another thing about Pound, about this same sort of theme he brings up. And all the time he's using Pound to critique modern poetry, I think. He's doing it through Pound. So it's a good study just to, to check on the Pound references. And there's a nice part here about how you should do it. This is a manual. Um, you need to, you've got to unlearn and turn and repent. This is, and then you come back with nothing there, a blank page, and you become come back fresh and eager. No preconceived ideas, nothing there, just ready. Mm -hmm. well, I love this down here mm -hmm. of Valmiki receives Ramiata, and Homer says, this is a beautiful line, isn't it? Beautiful translation. I don't know what it would be like in the Greek, but it's beautiful. Tell me, O Virgin of God, thou pure brightness. Tell me the words of my speaking. It's all through the poet, to God. For of ourselves, we only hear rumours, a lot of that rumours, and know nothing. You are everything. We only hear rumours. This is all just rumours at the moment. That's a beautiful thing. And every poet then who does that, there's the answer coming. The God answers every prayer. Um, and of course, Picasso comes in for the, for the pounding also. And Francis introduces this lovely term, old men's talk. Beethoven in the end, the last quartets for old men talk. He, he had lost enough. Pound never got to old men's talk. Picasso never got to old men's talk. Just the beloved and the poet and the lover singing. And the audience just, if they get it, well that's the, that's the bonus. That's the benefit I think. When all the self rubbish is being cleaned off and so on. And then this uh, thing here about um, this flame, but opens art, opens to art when you've got rid of all this stuff, and saintship, that linking of art and spirituality is, is a really strong message in Francis. You know, that art, Gabriel is a perfect artist, and through art, there's a, this, is, this is the loving way to live. Take the elitism out of it, you know, what did Kumar Swami say? He said, you know, everyone is born an artist. Uh, and our life just brutalizes us in many ways. Mm. There's no artist is an elite thing. Okay. And Ezra Pound too without old men singing. Okay. Okay, I'll just, I'll, there's a few other little ones here. Um, but you, this is the sort of stuff which Francis would have liked. This is, this is Pound's quote from a book. Okay. Pound is saying, it's all rubbish to pretend that art isn't didactic. A, revolution is, a revelation is always didactic. <laughs> We're talking truth here. You know, it's, it's, it's got to be, got to say something. Didactic may be a bit strong there, but that's typical pound. And you can hear that voice in Francis. Now, Francis talks about spirit and stay with God. And what does that spirit mean? The best definition I've seen is in Kitty's book. It says, the spirit is the soul when experiencing subtle and gross worlds through the mind and body gets illusory limits and, and apparently becomes finite and is termed spirit. So here we're all God, but when it comes through this gross and, and the subtle world and we feel it there, there's something other than just mental, that's spirit. So it's really... Um, 
um, the self in us, for another word, but because it's been localized, your spirit and their spirit, we're calling this spirit. And this is, the, this is going to be the one which is going to be, I think, the classic, oh, this opens book five, the fantastic, majestic statement of Francis. Um, Art is an act of love in likeness of itself. Love can only make love. Spirit, the soul coming through, moulding matter into lovely form. And the lovely form is trying to imitate the God-man's form. That's what all art tries to do. All art's trying to, in its own blunt way, make that image again. God's compassion is avatar unto man. And men's devotion to avatar as God, by God. For devotion is by grace alone. We can't even do it ourselves. It's all Father's grace. All we have is His name. That's what I get from that. Uh, Avatar is His own act perfectly. <coughs> so when you get this seeing something perfect, you know, beautifully done, this is Father, in a way. This is what I've gathered. Um, and before His different names, speech retreats in confusion. Before the living one, the one present on earth in one's life, all one can say is, oh God, oh God, this is St. Francis' prayer. Oh God, what can I say now? I just, I'm just dumb, I can't say anything else. And you're just saying this, and weep and wait, because it's got to be him. Wait the round of his time and the poetry of his word to inform us in likeness and paint us in livingness. That's a big theme in Francis too. You can't be an artist in his paint his image unless you are painted in, by God in his image yourself. Mm -hmm. Out of nothing and get nothing. But you've got to have you, you, that's the first thing. You, the, the disciple thing is you've got to be his in his likeness in your life. Otherwise it's just all pretending. You have to do it, you have to become it. You've got to be his artwork before you can make his artwork. I think that's what he's saying there. And this wing sacrifice again, this idea of bubble with you. Okay, then there's a series of art is stuff. And um, there was a, um, before I came up here, I got this ad for a conference in New York, if you believe it, Warwick Hotel. Art is. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole thing is, this is, this is the, the hub of the art world, um, saying the whole conference is, what is art? Where does it come from? Where is it going? We should send them stay with God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's because, right. I mean, so the world is really on the edge of wanting this stuff. Yeah. And um, it's great. How many copies do you have? Hey. Yeah, yeah, oh. <laughs> um, and we've had these statements come through too. But the one here which I think is very beautiful. Um, um, when David or took a run dance before God, a harmony of movement was impressed on the minds of people who didn't even see the dance. That something transpersonal happens. That there's, there's this realm of art, it's not subtle, but it's accessible in the gross in a way. Um, it's sort of, and other people got the effect of it. When Solomon, oh, these are masters, the band they sang, music was entering into people's lives. There's something happens in this realm of art. When Enoch walked with God, walking again was beautiful. When the friends of God talked with him, speech became lovely. When Muhammad offered his five prayers, the hearts of him listened and inclined towards prayer. And I think of Baba saying again for that book, I'm so proud of it, stay with God. People haven't heard the book, we have been... We will benefit from this book, I think, in years to come, because that's the quality of, this, of the book, of art. Okay, um, and the shock one is interesting. He doesn't put aesthetic shock. He just puts shock. It's the shock uh, whereby the soul awakens to itself. You know, if someone tells you what the meaning of life is, it's an object. Oh, that's what it is, okay. I put it on my t-shirt. No. <laughs> I got it. But that's still data. It's not you. But when the art, the shock comes when you're, oh my God. And that is really a picture of yourself. And what you say is exactly it. Oh my God. <laughs> and that is it. Uh, you are, it's been revealed to you. Art has that role. That's the shock and you recognize awareness of itself and you understand 
that the world is nothing but the shadow of the real, and everything is past except his face, and this is, this is leading you on um, to, to the final image of Baba, in a way. And I think that's what we can all do to each other. What's your image? I want to, have, I want to be fed with that. I want the shock of that so it can awaken me. You know, I, that, that's I think what we need, what's the goal, in a way, of a Baba community. Uh, this is this is the main game, I think. Okay. Um, his craft in us, fashioning us in the likeness of himself. That's that idea again that we have to become his image before we can make his image. We have to become shaped by him. Uh, otherwise, we're just we're just going to be flicking the paint all around again. <laughs> and this lovely statement. You know, about the. He builds cathedrals and temples and mosques, carving their columns in exact variety, cuts and paints figures of himself. This is all him in another form. Art is a magical thing that you can actually get Baba's reality through this iconography somehow. That's, the, that's him. You know, he's not just in this physical form here, but art will. You can see him there. Um, in exact proportion, that these are the textbooks for us to write living, getting back to Ward's idea of what values we need to live by. This is the iconography of the real, that's a Kumaraswami term. Uh, this is the reality here. We need this art, otherwise we're going to be, we're going to starve spiritually. You know, we, we need to feed each other here. This is, this is really central. That, that's, that was my message I got from Francis in a while, you know. This is, art is not just decorative. This is central with Baba and with our future here. Um, that of ourselves, the last three lines, that of ourselves that we do is from the laboured breathing of unseen, unhearing, divisional thinking. The image which awakens is integral. When we think about it, it's split up. Dreamers depicts Dreamers depicting in dream a monstrous confusion of dreaming. This God really <coughs> had seen it, had been there and knows it, and the words come out real crystal clear and simple. Mm -hmm. And they have that power. There's no, there's no mus messing about here. This guy knows it. Okay, this is the last one, yeah. Okay, so this is that, that beautiful coda, and then he brings in these five artists here. Um, and he really pulls it together like a symphony. This is going to be the final closing chords. And we move into this. This is just one of them. Art is the love of God. His avatar towards men. His, God's gift to us is Baba. Shining self-evident existence in the midst of seemingness. You see Baba in this. There's this reality here. A sun through mist veils revealing patterned landscapes of hills and farms and townships where none were. Awakening in men love and they in love cutting their lives and work in designs he lays down as a stone cutter fitly for house well conceived and dimensioned by a master architect. This is beautiful, absolutely human thing here. Very humanistic. Stay with God in whatever shape he shapes you. And work your work within the boundaries of that shape. So compassionate. Art is his shape of your seeing light through your hands, through your speech. Imagining his image. Stay with God. Let the dream of this light dream out the staying and the going of your form or millions of forms. They are not you. Whoever stays with God. Beautiful, isn't it? Okay. Brothers and sisters, Devatazabod. <laughs> <laughs>